Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar today on the ABCs of diabetes management. It looks like we still have some new participants rolling in, but in the meantime, before we get started with our presentation for today, I wanted to let you know that the presentation is sponsored by the Good Health Gateway Program. We have a quick housekeeping note um, before we get started with our content for today. I wanted to let everyone know that if you do have questions that come up during the presentation, you do have the ability to type in your questions through the GoToWebinar platform. And we will make a point to take some time at the end of the presentation today to answer questions that come in. Um, with that being said, if you don't feel comfortable asking questions in this forum, um, you can certainly reach out to us after the webinar today uh, and ask those questions to us um, privately as well. Um, our contact information will be provided at the end of the presentation. Um, but for those of you that feel comfortable asking questions and would like to ask questions on any of the content that we review today, please feel free to do that at any time during the presentation and we'll take some time at the end uh, to answer those questions. So with that being said, let's dive in. And first we're going to just introduce the presentation um, and the presenters and panelists for our presentation today. So I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Sarah Costa and I'm Senior Manager of Operations and Client Services at Abacus Health Solutions. As some of you may know, Abacus is the third party administrator of the Good Health Gateway program, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm joined today by Cindy Sylvia. Cindy is a diabetes nurse educator for the Good Health Gateway program. She has been an RN for over 30 years and has worked in diverse areas, including acute care, home care and public health, as well as teaching nursing students. Recently, Cindy was elected chairperson for the Rhode Island Certified Diabetes Outpatient Educators Continuing Education Committee. So with that being said, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Cindy, who will be reviewing with us today the ABCs of diabetes management. Cindy? Thanks, Sarah. Welcome everyone, and thank you all for joining us today for this webinar the ABCs of managing your diabetes. So what exactly are the ABCs? Well, ABCs are the most basic, most important essential items. ABCs are the standards of care. The standards of care include screening and testing to provide direction for the planning and formulation of therapeutic actions that will positively impact health outcomes. The ABCs or standards of care are critical in preventing and reducing long-term complications of diabetes. Next slide, please. So starting at the top of the list, A1C. So the A1C is an essential blood test it's used in the formulation and modification of your diabetes treatment plan. The A1C is used to monitor and evaluate how well your diabetes treatment plan is working. The A1C is an average of your blood glucose over a two to three month period of time. And the higher the A1C, the greater the risk of developing complications. Your provider will recommend how often you should have your A1C done. Typically, the A1C is done twice a year, every six months. Occasionally, the A1C might be done sooner on a three month basis. This is especially occurs when there are changes in the medications or changes in the treatment approaches. The thing here is you can take control and take care of your diabetes treatment. I encourage you to talk to your provider to determine what your target A1C should be. In general, 
you want to aim for an A1C of seven or less. Having said that, it's also important to mention here that the A1C is individualized. Everyone is an individual with unique circumstances and health issues. Not everyone should or needs to have an A1C of seven or less. Please consult with your provider as to where your target A1C should be. Next slide, please. Blood pressure and diabetes. Nearly one in three Americans has high blood pressure. Two out of three people with diabetes have high blood pressure. When your blood pressure is high, your heart has to work harder. High blood pressure puts you at greater risk for heart disease, stroke, heart attack, eye and kidney disease. The good news here, and yes, there is good news, high blood pressure can be treated with lifestyle changes, healthy diet, activity, and medications. Many times high blood pressure is a silent problem. You may not know that you have high blood pressure unless you have it checked. So it's really important to have the, your provider check your blood pressure. The good news, take charge, take control. There are some things that you can do to help keep your blood pressure on target. First off, take your medication as prescribed. Follow a low sodium, heart healthy diet. Consider having a home blood pressure monitor. Know your numbers. Talk to your provider about what your ideal or your target blood pressure should be. The American Diabetes Association has some target blood pressures, and the treatment goals for blood pressure are, per the American Diabetes Association, a systolic blood pressure of less than 140 and a diastolic blood pressure of less than 90. Please talk to your provider as to what your target values should be. Next slide, please. So C, cholesterol, the good, the bad in diabetes. Managing your cholesterol, also, cholesterol is also known as blood lipids. Um, managing your cholesterol can help prevent health problems. HDL, also known as the good cholesterol. This keeps your blood vessels from getting blocked. It helps to remove deposits from the insides of your blood vessels. The LDL, or the bad cholesterol, can narrow or block your blood vessels. Blocked blood vessels can lead to an increased risk of heart attack or stroke. Triglycerides are another type of fat, and an elevated triglyceride can also increase your risk for heart attack or stroke. Of importance to note here is that cholesterol many times is impacted by blood pressure and blood sugar. So if you have high blood pressure and high blood sugar, chances are likely that you have um, some changes in your cholesterol levels. The good news here, take control, take charge of your diabetes treatment plan, Eat a heart-healthy diet. Get active if you're able. Quit the use of tobacco products if applicable. And tobacco products also include vapes here. Maintain a healthy weight. Take your medications. Know your numbers. The American Diabetes Association has some guidelines for values for cholesterol, LDL below 100, and HDL above 40 for men and above 50 for women. And they want to see triglycerides below 150. Please consult with your provider to determine what your target levels should be. Next slide, please. 
So diabetes protein urine test. Protein urea is a condition in which the urine contains protein. If protein urea is not controlled, the increased amount of protein in your urine can lead to kidney damage and may progress to end-stage renal disease. In the United States, uncontrolled diabetes is the leading cause of end-stage renal disease. People with end-stage renal disease require dialysis or need to undergo a kidney transplant. The good news here, take control, take charge, keeping your blood glucose levels on target decreases your risk of kidney damage. Controlling your blood pressure by taking your medications also decreases the risk Know your lab numbers. So the lab value references here are a little unique and each lab has a unique reference range and they vary per lab facility. So it's really important to hear, to talk to your provider, to review your labs and to discuss with your provider where your target level should be. Next slide. So E, eye health. So a comprehensive eye exam is recommended once a year for people with diabetes. And the comprehensive eye exam involves your eyes being dilated. The dilation of your eyes allows for a more thorough exam. It's important to detect conditions or changes early so that the proper treatment can be started to help avoid the loss of vision. Diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of preventable blindness. High blood sugar levels can damage the tiny vessels in the eyes, causing diabetic retinopathy. Diabetes-related eye complications have nothing to do with needing glasses. The good news here, take charge, take control, Keep your blood glucose levels on target. Early detection and treatment can lower the risk of blindness by 95%. Regular eye exams are crucial in discovering potential problems, allowing for the treatment to start early and maintaining eye health. Please remember to schedule your eye exam once a year. Next slide. So foot exam, so nerve damage from diabetes is called diabetic neuropathy. About half of all the people with diabetes have some degree of nerve damage. Peripheral neuropathy is the most common form of diabetic neuropathy. It occurs mostly in the feet, but can also occur in the hands. Some of the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy include tingling, a feeling of pins and needles, a burning sensation, a stabbing sensation, or you can also have loss or changes in feeling or pain. Your provider needs to check your feet at least once a year. And the picture here is a great image of a provider checking someone's feet. The complete or comprehensive foot exam involves checking the condition of the skin, checking the muscles and the bones, and that's what the provider here is doing in this picture, checking the muscles and the bones of the foot, checking the pulses, and many of you have already had a comprehensive diabetes foot exam, and so you know what a monofilament test is. And for those of you that have not had a monofilament test, basically, the provider takes a very thin piece of plastic similar to um, fishing line and um, what goes around to various parts of the foot, capturing to see if you have sensation. 
the positive thing here, take control, take charge, is and there's some good news regarding your feet. Um, take a look at your feet every day. Don't soak your feet. Soaking your feet can lead to um, your having development of open areas. You particularly want to not go barefoot because if you walk barefoot, you can step on something such as a splinter or a piece of glass and not know it. And then that can lead to a foot ulcer. You want to wear com comfortable, supportive shoes with socks. You want to keep your toenails trim and you want to keep your blood glucose levels on target. And please make sure that you take your socks off when you go to see your provider and make sure you have that yearly foot exam. Next slide, please. All right, get vaccinated. So you're gonna say, why is it important? Um, each year, thousands of adults living in the United States get sick from diseases that can be prevented by vaccines. People with diabetes are at higher risk for serious problems from vaccine preventable diseases. Diabetes, even if well managed, can make it harder for your immune system to fight infections and possibly putting you at increased risk for developing complications. Vaccination is one of the most safest ways to protect your health. It's important to talk with your provider about vaccines, which vaccines are more applicable to you. And it's also important to keep your vaccination status up to date. And as you see on the slide here, we do have um, the common vaccines listed, influenza, pneumococcal, Tdap, hepatitis B, shingles, and COVID-19. So please discuss with um, your provider which vaccines are the best for you and right for you. All set, Sarah. Thank you, Cindy. So I think the information that Cindy provided was really helpful and informative, um, certainly for someone that's managing diabetes, but also someone that may be new to diabetes management as well. On this slide, we just have a quick recap of some of the ABCs of management. Um, for diabetes that Cindy reviewed with us today. I think as Cindy mentioned, it's really important to remember that everybody's different. And so we encourage you to speak with your provider about each of these topics in more detail. Many of the items that Cindy reviewed with us today are also important components of the Diabetes Care Rewards Program. On the upcoming slides, we'll review the program in more detail and outline how you can participate and earn rewards for staying on track with your diabetes management. So what is the Good Health Gateway Program and who can participate? The program is a free benefit offered by your employer and participation in the program is completely voluntary, private and confidential. Employees and their covered dependents, including spouses, children, and adult dependents with diabetes are eligible to participate. So this includes all types of diabetes. So type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, gestational, as well as prediabetes. The Good Health Gateway rewards you for taking care of your health and we aim to connect you with your existing provider or care team. Since this program is sponsored by your employer, each program is a little bit different, but to receive the program rewards, members must complete specific activities that align with the American Diabetes Association guidelines for diabetes management. Many of these activities are items that we've reviewed during the presentation today. So let's take a closer look at the program activities. So these activities include an annual fasting blood lipid test, an annual diabetes foot exam, an annual eye exam, an annual protein test, 
and twice yearly we ask members to complete their HbA1c. It's important to note that any of these activities that you've completed in the last 12 months will count towards your program requirements, with the exception of the A1c, which is required twice a year. I also want to note that depending on your employer, you may also have to complete an annual phone conversation with one of our Good Health Gateway diabetes educators. So on this slide here, um, we just have some quick information about how to register or learn more for the program. So at any time, you can visit the web address shown on the screen here, goodhealthgateway.com. If you select your employer from the drop-down menu on the homepage, you can register for the program or click the Learn More button, and that will provide you with information specific to your employer. So it will outline all of your program requirements and the rewards you can get by participating in the program. I also want to point out that registration for the program is open at any time. So there's no open enrollment period or registration period with a deadline. You can register for the program whenever is most convenient for you at any time. If you would prefer to talk to one of our helpline representatives, we're also available uh, Monday through Friday to speak with you about the program as well. So call us at the number you see listed on the screen here. So on this slide, I just want to reiterate that um, this program is offered by Abacus Health Solutions. We're a third party vendor that specializes in the development and administration of incentive-based wellness programs. It's important for you to know that your participation in this program is completely um, private and confidential. So your employer will never know, um, you know that you have diabetes or a family member has diabetes and you're participating in this program. So we want you to feel confident that this is a confidential benefit. All right, so that concludes the content that we had for our webinar today, but I would like to take some time to address some of the questions that have come in during our presentation. So we'll take a few minutes now and do that. Um, <clears throat> so let's just see what we have here. All right, this is a good one. So we have someone here that's asking if there will be a copy of the slides and the presentations uh, sent after the presentation today to attendees. So that's a great question. So yes, we will make the uh, presentation available to anyone that registered for the event today. Um, so folks that are attending uh, will be able to hear it and folks that registered but maybe weren't able to attend will get a copy of the presentation. We'll also be sending a copy of the presentation to all of our registered participants in the program and sharing uh, the link to the recorded version of the presentation with all of our employers. We have a YouTube channel for Good Health Gateway, so if you go to YouTube and search for Good Health Gateway, you'll find our YouTube channel and it will have all of our webinar content. So not only today's presentation, but also webinars that we've done in the past. So you are able to go out there at your convenience and um, check out some of the content that we have. So it looks like we've had a couple of other questions that have come in. Um, Cindy, can you speak to this one? Um, we have a question about um, the dilated eye exam. So what exactly is the dilated eye exam and um, what can be expected uh, after that exam? Is there anything that I should prepare for for that? So the dilated eye exam, you're going into an ophthalmologist office. They will um, give you numbing drops for your eyes, and they will also give you drops to dilate your eyes. And basically, 
It allows the eyes to be opened wide so that the ophthalmologist can look at the small vessels of the eyes to see if diabetes has had any impact, if at all, on the eye. Um, great question about asking about being prepared because your eyes are gonna be dilated and they stay dilated for some time. So it's important that you make arrangements to have somebody drive you because um, you're, the, they're, you're not gonna be able to drive on the way home because your eyes are gonna be too dilated, particularly with the sun glare. So that, that's a great question. Thank you, Cindy. We also have a question here about resources for um, foods to eat and when. Um, so the question is, are there websites out there that can tell you what types of foods to eat? Um, so diabetes friendly foods and recipes. Do you have any resources that you could recommend? So the American Diabetes Association, diabetes.org, um, they have a great discussion with regards to carbohydrates and blood sugars. They also have a secondary website called Diabetes Food Hub. So it's Diabetes Food, F-O-O-D, Hub, H-U-B. And that is really great because they have recipes that are, um, you can actually download them. And those recipes will tell you how many grams of carbohydrates per serving, how many calories, and how much fat. And they also have um, a section that if there's only two of you living in the house, then they've got recipes for two. They've got recipes for um, seasons like the, the 4th of July, Christmas, special recipes for that. And that's a great resource. The other one is the, res uh, the dietitians in the United States. Their website is Eat Right. So E-A-T-R-I-G-H-T.org. Those are all great references. Thank you, Cindy. We do have a couple of questions here that are very specific to the program rewards uh, and rewards specific to each individual employer. So as I mentioned earlier, because this is an employer sponsored program, uh, the rewards for participating are, are different based on who your employer is. So my, my best recommendation um, is to visit the website and select your employer and then click on that learn more button. That will take you to a page that will describe uh, everything about your employer's program. So the program activities that you'll need to complete, how to register, uh, as well as what the reward will be for participating. The other thing is if, you don't feel comfortable going out to the website and getting the information. We have fabulous, fabulous helpline representatives here at Good Health Gateway um, that are available to assist you uh, at, at any time with any questions that you have. So the website for the program is www.goodhealthgateway.com. And our helpline phone number is 1-800 643-8028. And again, I'll send that contact information to everyone uh, when we send out the presentation as well. All right, so let's see what other questions we have here. Cindy, here's a good one for you. So can you give an example of when it would not be recommended to have an A1C that's less than seven? Sure, there's several instances where your provider may want to see your A1C a little bit above seven. And, and these circumstances include, if you have a history of severe hypoglycemia, so severe low blood sugars, if you're not able to sense that you're having an episode of low blood sugar, and this is called hypoglycemic unawareness. If you have other serious or significant health problems, it may be better for you to have your A1C at seven or a little higher. And lastly, um, older individuals should avoid having severe lows because this increases the risk of falls. So all of those are um, reasons why 
you would not, you know, shouldn't have your A1C below seven. But again, it's important to discuss with your provider where your A1C should be targeted. Thank you, Cindy. So I know we're right up about the half hour here, folks. Um, so certainly all the questions that came in that we didn't get to, uh, we'll take those and we'll get back to you all individually following the presentation. But I wanna thank you all for participating and wish you all a happy rest of your afternoon. Thanks everyone. Thank you.